Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to get started with Ubuntu 16.04, assuming that you've just installed the operating system, booted into it for the first time, and have no idea what you're doing. So to get things started, over here on the left, that's your launcher for uh, for this OS. If you've ever used Windows, which you probably have, uh, down on the bottom of your screen, you would have seen a taskbar. This is kind of the equivalent, so you can pin and unpin items from this taskbar over here. And the equivalent of a start menu is going to be the search your computer button over here. If you click that, you can search through your computer for files, folders, and applications that you have installed on your computer. So for instance, if you wanted to look for GIMP, the image manipulation program, you would just type GIMP in. Uh, apparently, I don't have that installed on my computer, but don't worry, in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to install some software. So one thing you may need to do is connect to Wi-Fi. So over at the top, uh, the top right hand corner, you're going to see an icon over here uh, to the left of where it will say your language. And if you click on that as a drop down, it's going to show you your connections. In this particular case, I'm running um, Ubuntu as a virtual box. So it's showing me as a wired connection, but really outside of this virtual box, it's a wireless connection. So you'd be able to pick, you'd be able to see and pick out your Wi-Fi connections from here. So you would select one of them and then type in your password to connect to that router um, in order to get Wi-Fi working. So next up, if you want to remove some of these default items from the launcher, which consists of uh, files, your main, uh, well, files and folders explorer inside of Ubuntu, LibreOffice apps, including Calc, Writer, and Impress, Ubuntu software, Amazon, system settings and well not notes notes is just what i'm using for this on screen display you can right click any of them and go ahead and hit unlock from launcher while you're at it if you do have any apps open that you want to stake around there you would simply right click on the open app and hit lock to launcher so we'll just do that right now uh just to demonstrate and unlock same way so for instance if i wanted to get rid of this amazon app because i'm not really a big amazon shopper i could right click and go to unlock from launcher I do actually shop on Amazon a lot, but that's one option if you want to do that. So if you don't like Firefox as your main browser, you're probably going to want to install Chrome. Uh, I do like Firefox. I also like Chrome. So you can get Chrome from right online, Google's main website for the downloads. Um, I have the link in the description. It's google.com slash intl slash en dash us slash chrome slash browser. At least that's the right version for me. Um, and you'd be able to download the Linux version where we can install that. So let's just go ahead and do that. We'll grab the .deb file for Debian slash Ubuntu because we're running Ubuntu, which, by the way, is based on Debian. That's why they share the same uh, file extension there. So, yeah, we'd be able to go ahead, download this, and install. And I forgot how slow my internet was. If this does get um, all the way downloaded, we'll go ahead and install that. But what you would do is uh, go to your home directory using files, look for where it says downloads, and then when this .deb file is done, I believe you can just kind of right click it and hit uh, run as a installer application, something like that, and then you'll be able to get Chrome up and running. So that's all well and good. Beyond that, if you want to get any other software working on Ubuntu, one of the strongest uh, pieces of Ubuntu, in my opinion, is the Ubuntu software app. Uh, located in your launcher by default, but also searchable with Search Your Computer. So in the Ubuntu software app, you'll have a pretty easy to use uh, graphical user interface for installing different applications, much like the Windows Store. I don't know if there's a Mac equivalent, but it allows you to install a bunch of software in Ubuntu without going out to the browser and without doing direct downloads. Instead, you can just select one of these apps like VLC Media Player, which I do highly recommend as a video and audio player. Open that up, click install, and what it will do is it'll prompt you for your password, your administrative password, which is the main account, or, well, really, the uh, the password of the account you created the computer with. Um, created the operating system, that is, Ubuntu, not the computer itself. And uh, once you go ahead and put the password in, it'll allow you to just go ahead and install VLC Media Player in the background. So that's great, because we don't really need to do any other steps than that. It's as simple as a Windows install. Um, now, actually, back in the Ubuntu software suite as well, 
you're probably going to want to go to the updates tab where there will be something called OS updates and upgrade uh, whenever it loads there. And if you install that, it'll make sure that your computer is up to date and uh, basically the installation of your Linux files. And that's important, basically uh, maintaining security updates. Once again, I do apologize, man, and that's running really slow right now. Um, but if you also wanted to do that in the terminal, you would do a, not a sudo apt-get install, but a sudo apt great upgrade. And you'd probably do an update before that just to make sure that you get all of your repositories up to date with the files that are located inside of them. So we can go ahead and try to do that now. But unfortunately, the uh, Ubuntu installer is going ahead in the background there. Um, but yes, if you need to do your updates, what you're going to need to do, make sure you check out the updates tab. Look for the thing that says OS upgrade. Go ahead and run that in the background. If that doesn't work, do a sudo apt-get update followed by a sudo apt-get upgrade. And uh, that should get your computer up to date. If you want to be double sure about it, do a sudo apt-get And that'll make sure that your OS distribution is working uh, and up to date as well. So OS updates, that's what I was talking about, includes performance, stability, and security improvements. And you can see by clicking on it what it's going to update. You should do that. It's pretty important to take care of. So moving on from that, um, let's see here. Okay, so that's upgrading the system and all of your packages. You're going to want to make sure that your sound devices are selected properly. Ubuntu is pretty good about having it by default. So if you have speakers plugged in, it's probably going to come out through the speakers. But if you right click over here by the sound icon in the top right hand corner of Ubuntu 16.04, go to sound settings. It's going to bring up this dialog here and you can select what your default device is simply by left clicking on it to choose. So if I choose here, it's the no amplifier version. If I choose here, it's the amplifier version input. We'll have a bunch of microphones and yours will probably look different because once again, I'm running this as a emulated OS. Um, so it's not showing my real devices there, but select the microphone you wanna use. Make sure you get, you're getting your levels input. Same with your uh, audio output. Are you using headphones? Are you using a speaker setup? You should be getting levels as you have videos playing or games playing or whatever you've got going on there. And that's the first place to check if you're having any issues. So uh, as far as selecting a background goes, it wouldn't be too complicated. In general, just grab something from offline. Uh, I like Pixabay actually for that. I believe it's .com. The reason Pixabay is cool is that everything on it is uh, completely free and in a way that you don't even necessarily need to give credit to the uh, their creators, though it's appreciated, of course. But you can search plenty of free stock photos here, and some of them are quite good. So if I was to put in something like hiking, something that I actually like to do, um, whenever it decides to low, load, um, you would be able to go ahead, grab images, down them, download them offline, and then set them as a background. I'm going to see if I actually have some pictures already to go so that we can save a little bit of time here. Once again, I do apologize for uh, the slowness of my internet. Okay, let's, uh, let's grab this one. This actually looks decent. And I'll close that tab, save a little bit of bandwidth. Okay, while well that's going on in the background, uh, adding online accounts and customizing your settings on Ubuntu. So if you want to go ahead and find the system settings, you simply open up, search your computer, type in system settings, and it's going to give you a list of all of the different things you can modify inside of Ubuntu 16.04, namely online accounts. If you want to add your Gmail in, that's a great place to do it. Appearance, I believe you can set your background there, but there are easier ways to do it as well. So I'm going to download this large image and I should have to put in a captcha because I'm not signed in. 1743 download. Okay, great. And save that to the computer. What's the other thing that's installing? Ah, yeah, Google Chrome. Right, so <laughs> obviously when you're going to use an operating system, make sure you're not running on like 56K dial-up. Uh, I'll actually go ahead and cancel that for now. Um, 
yeah, as I mentioned earlier, right click and hit run as an installer to, in order to install Google Chrome. And that should get you going in most cases. So this should be done in a minute. Let's go ahead and check out online accounts. So this is where you would integrate your computer with like your Facebook account, your Google account, and it should be uh, possible to do it with other accounts as well. Um, look up for tutorials and that kind of thing for more complicated accounts. But if you want a Google account, it's really as simple as just clicking on the account type, logging into Google here. It could be like uh, Chris Tutorials youtube at gmail.com put your password in continue through the steps and it's going to allow you to check which types of uh basically information from your google account you want to include on your ubuntu installation so do you want ubuntu to be allowed to basically check your mail do you want it to be allowed to uh sync up with google drive and mount google drive uh, on your um on your operating system so that you can see and edit the files. Do you want, uh, I, I think there's options for messages and that kind of thing like instant messaging. Um, but yeah, all that kind of stuff, just look in there for that. And that should get you going with adding most of your regular accounts. So back on taking care of the background here, I'm going to open up my downloads folder using the files tool. So go to downloads. Okay, so now that this image is downloaded, we can go ahead and set up the background here. If I recall, all you really need to do is right click on an image you like as the background and hit set as wallpaper. Can't really get much simpler than that. And now we have that as our Ubuntu background. And you can see it also changes the color scheme a little bit in order to reflect more what our background is. So that's pretty cool in and of itself. Of course, if we wanted to play around more with the appearance options, we would go to system settings and we can see appearance where uh, you can select from a multitude of different wallpapers, not just the ones you've downloaded offline and change your theme inside of Ubuntu. So if you want it to look different overall, you can do that. But I think most people are going to stick to ambience uh, just because it's a lot easier on the eyes in general. Also, you can increase your launcher icon sizes. That's these over here on the left and such similar behavior. So the final thing I want to leave you guys with is adding user accounts to your computer. It may be the case that you're not the only person who uses your laptop or desktop. So if you go to system settings and look for user accounts, you can double click there, hit unlock, and you're going to need to put in your administrator pa uh, password in order to do this for reasons that should be pretty obvious. Uh, you don't want people randomly creating accounts. Um, you can go ahead and hit this plus button now, and that'll allow you to add a new account to the computer. Now, there's two kinds of accounts by default, standard and administrator. A standard account is not going to have the ability to do things like uh, possibly upgrading the system with a sudo apt-get uh, dist upgrade. I believe the only way you can do that is if you are an administrator or have administrative rights. Um, and an administrator is of course going to be able to do those things. So an administrator can run all of those pseudo commands that you may not want a the average person to be able to do. Maybe you have kids who are going to use the computer. They should probably get a standard account. Um, better safe than sorry, right? But it's up to you. Uh, whatever kind of account you want to make here, just put in the name. Uh, so you could say Billy Bob. Now you'll notice the, the username automatically input is all lowercase and all kept as one word. That's a good thing and I, I believe it's actually required to be one word and lowercase. So don't really try to screw with that if you can. Um, you can of course change the username if you want. So it could be cheese instead. But I think if you do like capital cheese, that's going to cause issues. Let's try that. All right. I, and I believe the reason there is of course capitalization doesn't work but if i use cheese that works perfectly fine now before someone can log in on their account you're actually going to need to set a password for them or at least in this uh this options menu choose login without a password it's your call but they should probably have a password you can say okay kid log in and then set your own password that's one option we'll actually go ahead and do that here I'm just just going to see how that goes so with that, they'd be able to log in theoretically. So let's actually try that. Let's go ahead and log out here, which is in the top right-hand corner. So log out. 
And then we'll try logging in as Billy Bob on account cheese. So, yep, log in. No password or anything. And theoretically, because we made it a standard account, should not be able to run pseudo commands. All right, so we're on the second account of our Ubuntu installation. So I guess that'll wrap it up for this video. I've been Chris. Thank you very much for watching my Ubuntu introduction tutorial. If you'd like to donate to the channel down below because you found it to be that awesome, would be greatly appreciated. But I'll see you guys in my future videos.